No, this isn't a tarantula, but it's probably the biggest wolf spider you'll ever see, and let me tell you, past its giant fangs and immense speed, this unusual spider is chock full of incredible biological secrets. It's sunset in the desert. As the light fades, the arid wasteland begins to come to life, with creatures emerging from the woodwork to engage in another day of survival. I'm Spencer Hoffman, and this secret world has fascinated me all my life, especially the fearsome predators that make their living on the things that go bump in the night. That's right, I'm talking about spiders. Over the years, I've worked with some of the strangest and deadliest in the world, but one group has always been extremely special to me, the wolf spiders. And here in the deserts of Arizona, they're just about the last thing you'd want to run into if you're a little insect roaming around the dry, sandy ground. But there is one wolf spider that stands above all others, one of the largest in the world, and definitely a giant among North American species, the Carolina wolf spider. It's a spider I've been after since I started this channel five years ago, and my best chance of finding one is here in Arizona at the height of monsoon season. So we've come out to a remote location in the Sonoran Desert, gearing up to hike the desert washes in hopes of finding giant spiders. Hi, bud. Okay. There we go. Okay. That is a tarantula. Normally, tarantulas, especially new world species. Hi, buddy. Don't drop. Don't drop. You gotta be very careful because these are heavy bodied spiders. And unlike wolf spiders and things like fishing spiders where they can actually take some, some falls, this guy would actually get pretty hurt if he fell. So we gotta be careful with him. Hi. We're out in remote Arizona wilderness and all of the tarantulas are, have this pretty indescript brown and tan coloration. This guy has a little bit of bronze on his abdomen. That might be something characteristic. If I can ID this as a species, you'll see it on your screen. But these guys are one of the iconic spiders of the American West. Always an absolute pleasure to see. Look at how big that spider is. You know I can't pass up a good giant spider out here in the desert, right? What we're actually looking for is one of the largest true spiders in the US. Yes, that's well, this is a spider too, right? These guys are grouped in a little suborder of spiders known as the mygalomorphs. And they all have that kind of tarantula build with that big humped cephalothorax, tiny little eyes, and giant, giant fangs. But the biggest difference is actually the way the fangs work. Tarantulas fold down like snake fangs. True spiders pinch like claws. And if you look at the bottom of this guy, you can actually see his fangs fold down. I can tell this is a male because he has those big old pedipalps right in the front. He's probably out here looking around for females. They'll be hiding in burrows underneath rocks and stuff. The males don't live very long, only a few years, and once they hit sexual maturity, it's pretty much over for them. Females, though, can live for decades. So uh, spiders kind of put the whole, this is why women live longer than men, to the extreme. Now, of course, he is not the happiest, so we want to get him back out in the environment as soon as possible. But seeing him out means there's plenty of insect activity. It has to be perfect if we're hunting for a giant wolf spider. So not all giant spiders are tarantulas, and wolf spiders are part of a really impressive super family within the advanced or true spiders. These lycosids are no joke and have neurotoxic venom. And some of their members have the most potent neurotoxins of all spiders in the world. Wolf spiders though are actually harmless. The venom they have is called a lycotoxin, and it's really only a paralytic that affects insects and other small invertebrates. But their venom is actually really special because I always grew up hearing these stories about how if a wolf spider bit you, it would rot your arm off and you'd die. The thing is, wolf spider venom doesn't work that way at all. In fact, people are probably misdiagnosing staph infections and you actually can't get that from a wolf spider bite. See, turns out wolf spider venom, especially the venom of the larger wolf spiders like the one we're after, is antimicrobial. So their venom actually neutralizes bacteria, meaning you're actually less likely to get an infection from a wolf spider bite than you would from simply just scratching yourself. And I bet you didn't know that about wolf spiders. It's kind of the fun thing about studying all these creepy little creatures that most most people don't want to take a closer look at because you find a lot of really neat secrets. And if you're enjoying discovering these secrets, consider liking this video so it can spread to other viewers just like you and we can all discover the secrets of the natural world together. 
Now, their venom might be cool, but there's a couple other features of the wolf spider's biology that we're actually taking advantage of while we're hunting them. See, these giant wolf spiders are nocturnal burrow dwellers, and with these monsoons cutting through the desert, they're actually getting flushed out. And if there's one characteristic that all the different lycosids share is that they have these little membranes in the back of their eye that reflect light back if you shine it at them. It's kind of cheap, it's kind of hackish, but if a giant wolf spider's out, we're gonna see it. We need to be very careful. In monsoon season, wolf spiders aren't the only things patrolling the deserts, nor the most venomous. Arizona is famous for its impressive lineup of venomous reptiles, many of which have unparalleled camouflage in this rocky terrain. One wrong step could mean an end to any of our careers, so we're advancing carefully, being mindful of the potential for biological landmines around every corner. Oh, look at this. Hi, right, buddy. That's a baby diamondback. Wow, they have a cool coloration out here. A lot more gray. I'm sure it is a diamondback. Yeah, okay, he doesn't have the head scales. So, what this guy is right here is a western diamondback rattlesnake, but a baby one. It's because it's a baby. Doesn't mean I can get complacent. These guys are still dangerously venomous and will give you a pretty nasty bite. But he is definitely out here, coiled up, looking for little kangaroo rats. We've seen a lot of these little mammals darting around out here. It's kind of chilly for Arizona right now. And as a result, he's conserving energy because it doesn't really make any sense for him to move. With the lights on him, he doesn't look very camouflaged, but that diamond patterning will help him blend in or at least look like he's not a snake in this environment. So we call it disruptive camouflage. At night, everything is eerily quiet and still in the desert. The animals that call this habitat home are like silent ninjas flitting about the environment, careful to make as little noise as possible. As you hike through these washes, there's this feeling like thousands of tiny eyes are watching you from the darkness. Occasionally, the flutter of wings overhead startles you, or the rustling of a small mammal skittering between the dry grasses. You're constantly checking over your shoulder, keeping track of how far you've gone and in what direction. If you get lost in the desert, rattlesnakes are the least of your worries, especially if you're from the humid coastal plain of North Carolina like I am. But we soldier on. Somewhere, beyond the dark void ahead, there are wolf spiders to be found. As we shine our lights, we're watching for the sparkling of their eyes glinting back at us. I saw a few disappear down burrows, but not close enough to tell if they're the species I'm after. Finally, after passing a small dried up pond, we come to a flat grassy section with some small shrubs. One of my buddies calls out to me that he has eyes on a wolf spider and is huge. Wow, look at the size of that wolf spider. There is no mistaking that. That is a Carolina. Wow, look at the size of the... That is beautiful. Well, let me uh, get my light. Oh, that is a spider I've been looking for for a very, very, very long time, and <laughs> a little bit further than I thought I would see one. But Arizona, I'll take it. This is the Carolina wolf spider, and as you can see right here, it's a big one. This right here is the biggest wolf spider we have here in North America, on the entire continent. And ever since I started this YouTube channel, I have been wanting to see this exact spider. Here in the West, I knew I'd have a better chance at finally seeing them. And out here, they get even bigger, so that is excellent. As you can see right here, she is big. Almost wandering spider size, actually. And that is kind of crazy. The nice thing is, she is nowhere near as venomous as a wandering spider. In fact, a wolf spider bite would not be that serious. But the nice thing about wolf spiders is, they're actually complete sweethearts. They're big, hairy spiders, those huge, huge fangs, which creeps a lot of people out. But I'll tell you, once you get to know these spiders, they are probably one of the most darling animals you will ever see. Wolf spiders are one of my absolute favorites. And I actually really love, not that, they can be a little bit uncooperative. I love how cute their eyes are. See, we normally think of like jumping spiders with their big old eyes being cute, but wolf spiders have those big old eyes right in the front, a little tiny, almost like a frowny face of eyes underneath, and those big old chelicerae where their fangs are at almost look kind of like big old buck teeth. And I think these guys almost look like they're like sad or like kind of dorky when I look at them. Once, once you start seeing them that way, you'll never see them as frightening ever again. Now, as you can see, they are a little bit fast, which can be annoying. And they're actually among the fastest spiders in the world. And they use that speed 
to hunt. Those eyes aren't just for show. They have fantastic vision, especially under cover of night. The way Ben actually spotted the spider was the eye shine when he was shining his flashlight around in that wash. The way these guys hunt is they have a little little membrane in the back of their eye called a tapetum lucidum. And what it does is it amplifies light by reflecting it back and forth so they can create images even in pitch black darkness like we're in right now. That means a little camel spider, grasshopper, cricket, even a small centipede or baby tarantula is walking around. Guess what? You're not outrunning this spider. If she sees you, she will hunt you down like a wolf. That's where they get their name. And we give jumping spiders a lot of credit for their intelligence, but wolf spiders, don't underestimate them. These guys are really smart too. They're not the climbers like jumpers are, but they have to navigate in three dimensions over rough terrain. And now this rocky wash is a little bit tough for us humans to navigate, but imagine being less than an inch tall and trying to navigate this environment and not just hunt down prey, but intercept it as it's already moving. She has to make all kinds of split second calculations while she's traveling across the ground to be able to eat and survive. Could you imagine that? That is insane. And to be able to do that, she has to have incredibly good spatial awareness and that takes pretty solid intelligence for a tiny little spider like this. That is impressive. And I mean, just look at the colors on this thing. These are really, really impressive, really beautiful spiders. They have that patterned abdomen, the classic hogna, that arrow. That's how I can always identify the genus. And the Carolina wolf spider has these very pronounced eyes and like a flat face. So I, like, there's nothing else this could have been. With how much of a mess wolf spider taxonomy is, it's, it's sort of hard to be like, okay, this is a Carolina wolf spider that I just caught. But out here, that is the only thing this could have been. And I am, I'm almost like relieved. Five years on YouTube, been looking for this spider, and I finally got it. You are one heck of a treat to see here in Arizona, and I can't wait to see what we go after next. I gotta tell you, this is a spider I have wanted to see for a very long time. And I've been reading the comments, it's a spider that you've wanted to see for a while too. And now that we've got this one, I think there's another very special spider out here in Arizona that I'd like to target next. And it looks an X a lot like one of the deadliest spiders in the world, the six-eyed sand spider. It's gonna be a bit of a challenging hunt, but I think I'm up to the task. In the meantime, if you like giant spiders and you wanna see some really freaky ones, check out this video right here where I went down to Ecuador and was exploring the jungle for giant tarantulas. Hope to see you there, but until next time, don't forget to get outside and find your own adventure.